Hello, I'm Takuo Okoch at Japan Synchrotron Radiation Research Institute. I hope all of you are doing well even in this tough COVID-19 situation. Here, I'm going to talk about our PIM operation at the Synchrotron Radiation Facility, Springgate. Our PIM machines are installed at the BL-17 SU soft X-ray beamline where we can use horizontal, vertical, and circularly polarized soft X-rays provided from a multipolarization undulator. This beamline has several experimental stations for angle result for the emission spectroscopy, soft X-ray diffraction, scanning net XAS that can operate under ambient pressure helium, and PIM. As you know well, when PIM is combined with synchrotron radiation, you can get the information equivalent to XAS because the amount of emitting the photoelectrons are proportional to the absorption coefficient. By using this feature, you can obtain chemical distribution, valence states, and magnetic information elements selectively and with high spatial resolution. By selecting electron energies, you can also perform X-ray photo emission spectroscopy, XPS, at the microscopic region of your interest. In this beamline, we have two P machines. They are exerting complementary characteristics and doing very good jobs. One is a spelene. Whoops, sorry. This is an Elmtex product, uh, but this is dedicating to static observations with very high resolving power. It having observing a variety of materials brought by many user groups. For example, magnetic materials, semiconductors, graphene and metal heterostructures, mineral particles in the Fukushima nuclear power plant, extraterrestrial materials, and so on. On the other hand, our new machine focus PIM, which succeeds the role of the old PIM spectrum machine, though its special resolution is not so good as the spelling, it is indispensable to perform high technique experiments. Thanks to its electric structure, say, high voltage is applied in the objective lens and samples can be handled under ground potential. External speed stimuli such as laser pulses and electric fields are easily applied and thus suitable to do time result measurements. We are now also testing the low temperature measurements using a helium flow cryostat. And some users say its adjustable extraction voltage is very convenient to avoid unwanted discharging to fragile microfabricated samples. The prominent feature of our focus beam machine is a custom-made high-stiffness six-axis manipulator developed with CN Domicron and vacuum products in Japan. Sure, I know the special integral sample stage, IS stage of focus company is a very nice tool to perform the in-house experiment using similar sample systems. But in the synchrotron radiation facilities in which different user groups bring many kinds of samples with different shapes, or sometimes you need to attach electrodes or some other accessories, so the manipulator system is necessary and convenient. Because it has very robust body, it doesn't undermine the PIM's resolving power, and we confirm the spatial resolution better than 14 nanometers uh, when using mercury lamp. Our main research target using the focus beam is magnetic dynamics. So other important equipments are also established, such as a pulsed laser system, an X-ray chopper, synchronization system, and so on. The time result of the observations are done by well-known pump prop methods. Stimulate the sample, for example, by a laser pulse, taking image by a specific synchrotron pulse selected by a chopper, and in some cases, restore the magnetic state to the initial single domain by using a small electromagnet attached behind the sample holder. Then repeat the same sequence to improve statistics. So let's see some examples of the experiments. Because we, uh, they are the earlier studies, most of them are performed with PIM spectrum machine. 
First, we found an unexpectedly an interesting phenomenon of giant spin wave generation in the process of light-induced magnetization control. Nowadays, ultra fast magnetization switching using femtosecond laser pulses are drawing attention because of its potential to realize very quick and low energy consuming magnetic memories and data storages. Perpendicularly magnetized ferromagnetic gadolinium iron cobalt thin film system is known to show different response to the laser pulse according to its composition. When the gadolinium content is high enough to raise its angular momentum compensation temperature above the room temperature, magnetization is anomalously damped and the magnetization reverses very smoothly because it passes through the compensation temperature in the heating process by the laser pulse. On the other hand, the alloy with low compensation temperature Precession damping is low and magnetization reversal is prolonged. Yeah, here we examine the magnetization reversal dynamics for these two types of gadolinium iron cobalt samples. In the high gadolinium content, as you can see from this movie, smooth magnetization reversal is seen. But in case of the weakly damped system with low gadolinium content, surprisingly, anomalous magnetization modulations are seen from the time-dependent XMCDP images. By detailed analysis, we found that there are giant spin waves whose precession angle is as large as about 20 degrees which is about a, an order of magnitude larger than the conventional spin waves. We've also established the pump prop measurement system with radio frequencies. This slide shows a demonstration of resonant gyroscopic motion of a magnetic vortex core in a pomeloid disk, induced by AC magnetic fields, which is in the order of 10 MHz. So let's see the movie showing the resonant core movement of the magnetic vortex. And we also trying to develop a special sample holder that can introduce gigahertz microwaves and we confirm the capability to introduce up to 3 or 5 gigahertz using a prototype sample holder. In the future, we would like to launch into element selective and space resolved ferromagnetic resonance measurements, yeah, so called X ray FMR. The studies introduced so far have been done with the old PIM spectrum machine. But now we are challenging a new experiment using the focus beam to quantitatively decide the time constant of the emergence of magnetostatic and exchange energies by observing the magnetization forming process just after the pulse laser irradiation. The first successful data were obtained just a few days ago. So I hope I can collect more data and report detailed results and discussions in the main presentation planned in the next year. In addition to our original internal experiments, we are also conducting many user groups experiments such as helicity-dependent light-induced magnetization control of ferromagnetic films, laser-induced chromium generation, and manipulation, low temperature antiferromagnetism in strongly correlated compounds, and domain wall motions of soft magnetic materials and applied magnetic fields, and so on. Even though it's regretful to miss the opportunity to present our study in person for this year, but it's good at the same time to have the opportunity to report more advanced results again. Thanks for your attention and let's hope the present situation will be better and see you soon in Germany. Bye-bye.